All right, for this lesson, we're gonna take a look at simplifying rational expressions. So when we talk about a rational expression, we know that if we have a quotient between two integers, like four over seven, we call that a rational number. A rational number is any number that can be represented as a fraction without decimals. Similarly, the quotient of two polynomials, x plus seven and x plus eight, is a rational expression. A single variable rational expression is an algebraic fraction in which one of, in which the numerator and denominator are both polynomials. So we can see that we have a binomial on the top here and a binomial on the bottom, so they're both polynomials. In the second set, we have seven, which is just a basic monomial, and we have the two y plus five, which is a binomial. Remembering that in order for something to be polynomial, that means that the variable must have a whole number exponent So any variable can only have an exponent of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, no decimals, no fractions. We know that it can't be negative for the exponent. And we know that a variable can't be inside a radical. Because as we learned in Math 10C, if a variable is inside of a radical, that's the same as having a fraction for an exponent. Like if I had the square root of x, it's the same as x to the power of 1 over 2. If we recall the following methods for factoring polynomial expressions, then we can do it by a greatest common factor, which should always be our first step if it's possible. We can do a difference of squares, which means that if I have two perfect squares, like 4x squared minus 9, and they're subtracted from each other, then I'm just going to take the square root of the first plus the square root of the second, and the square root of the first minus the square root of the second. We can factor by inspection, and that's when I have something in the form of x squared plus bx plus c, and I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to c but add up to b. So it would be x plus one of the numbers times x plus the other number. We can do decomposition. If I have an a value, or a coefficient of x squared, and that's when I would take the a times the c, two factors that add that up to b, and then just break it down from there. Or we can factor by grouping, and that would be if I have ax squared plus bx plus dx plus c, and I'm going to pull out a common factor from the first two, common factor from the second two, and then when I do that, I should have, if I did it properly, the same factor that remains in the brackets. If I'm investigating equivalent forms of a rational expression, so if I took the rational expression 2x plus 2 over x squared plus 3x plus 2 and 2 over x plus 2, then I can substitute in values for x. And I can see that if I have zero where my x is, then I'm gonna have two times zero plus two over zero squared plus three times zero plus two. When I have two times zero, it's just gonna be zero. So all I'm left with on the top is two. On the bottom, when I have zero squared, it's zero. When I have three times zero, it's zero. So I'm just left with two. And two divided by two is the same as one. Well, when I do the same thing for the other rational expression, if I take two over 
0 plus 2, then that's still 2 over 2, or 1. And I can see that these two things are equivalent. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to try the same thing with 1, and I'm going to say that 2 times 1 plus 2 divided by 2 squared plus 3 times 2 plus 2. I'm going to put the top of my calculator, 2 times 1 plus 2, I'm going to get 4. I'm going to put the bottom of my calculator, and I'm going to have, sorry, this should be 1 squared, 1 squared plus 3 times 2 plus 2, sorry, 3 times 1 plus 2, and that's going to give me 6. And that's the same as 2 over 3. When I go to the other rational expression, 2 over 1 plus 2 is the same as 2 over 3. And we can say that they are, once again, equivalent. If I keep doing this process, 2 times 2 plus 2 over, this time it should be 2 squared, plus 3 times 2 plus 2. And this is going to give me 6 over 12, or 1 half. If I have 2 over 2 plus 2, that gives me 2 over 4, which is also 1 half. And we can say that these are still equivalent. If I do 3, 2 times 3 plus 2 over 3 squared, plus 3 times 3, plus 2. This is going to wind up giving me 8 over 20, which is the same as 2 over 5. If I have 2 over 3 plus 2, then that's the same as 2 over 5. And for the last one we're going to do here, if I take 2 times 4, plus 2 over 4 squared plus 3 times 4 plus 2, then that's going to give me 10 over 30, which is equal to 1 over 3. If I take 2 over 4 plus 2, that's the same as 2 over 6, which is also 1 over 3. And we can see when we go back over these that when I replace the x values, the fractions are always exactly identical. So what can we say about the values of the rational expressions 2x plus 2 over x squared plus 3x plus 2 and 2 over x plus 2? when x is replaced by 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, they're always equal. They're equivalent expressions. Because they're equivalent expressions, we can refer to those as equivalent forms of a rational expression. So we're going to write the numerator and the denominator of these two things in the factored form. So if I took, and we can see it down here, if I took 2x plus 2, then that's the same as 2 times x plus 1, when I factor out the 2. If I have x squared plus 3x plus 2, then I'm going to factor this, using inspection, and say that that's going to be the same as x plus 2 times x plus 1. And then, when I see all the factors in here, if I have a common factor, then I'm just going to divide out a common factor from the top and the bottom. And my common factor here is I have an x plus 1 on the top, 
and an x plus 1 on the bottom, just like if I had a variable there. So when I divide it out from those things, I'm just left with a 1, and 1 times 2 is going to give me 2, and 1 times x plus 2 is just going to leave me with the x plus 2. So when I pull out the common factor from the top and the bottom of the fraction, then I can see that the things are equivalent. This is the same as if I did it for a basic fraction. If I said that I had 12 over 15, then 12 is the same as 4 times 3, and 15 is the same as 5 times 3, and I can divide out the common factor of 3 from the top and the bottom. And I'm just left with 4 over 5. Exact same process. So we can say that when 2x plus 2 over x squared plus 3x plus 2 is written in the form 2 over x plus 2, it's in the lowest or simplest form because we've divided out all common factors from the top and the bottom. 2 over x plus 2 can't be further reduced by canceling terms. The 2s can't be reduced because I would also need a 2 with this x, which means I need to look at it for everything. This is the same as when we are simplifying when we are doing our quadratic equations. Now, 2 over x plus 2 is not the same as 1 over x plus 1, and we can always replace x by any permissible value in order to prove this, which means that if I replaced x with 0, if I replaced x with 2, if I replaced x with 3, then they shouldn't all match. They shouldn't all be the same like what we had in the chart up here. To reduce fractions, we cancel out entire factors. We don't just cancel out individual terms. We also need to deal with our non-permissible values. Remembering that a non-permissible value is any value for x that would make the equation or expression mathematically impossible. So we're going to start the same way and we're going to sub in the values for x into the top and the bottom. When I replace zero in the top and the bottom of this expression, we've already done that in the last page, we got two over two, which is the same as one. When I replace the top and the bottom by negative 1, I'm going to wind up with 0 over 0, which is indeterminate. Or undefined, because I can't divide by 0. When I replace the top and the bottom by negative 2, I'm going to wind up with negative 2 over 0, which is also undefined. It's not mathematically possible because in both cases I can't divide by 0. It's one of our basic math rules. And then when I get to negative 3, then when I replace negative 3 in the numerator, I get negative 4. When I replace it in the denominator, I get 2. This is going to wind up being negative 2. What happens when I do it for the simplified form? Well, when I replace 0, I get 2 over 2, which is equal to 1. When I replace it with negative 1, in this case, for this expression... I wind up with 2 in the numerator and 1 in the denominator, and I get 2. And this one actually worked, unlike its other equivalent form. When I replace it with negative 2, I get 2 over 0, which is undefined. And then when I replace it with negative 3, I get 2 over negative 1, which is still negative 2.